Pratik, I'm coming to you about telling the Indian viewer about the advantage of blockchain. And if you could start once again, because this point has been discussed, uh, perhaps explaining the success that we have achieved in India in different spheres, including uh, the unique case of Gadchiroli, where there is a uh, deployment of a blockchain uh, in, in that extremely backward uh, district of India. And I imagine that technology hopefully is making a difference to people's lives there. Yeah, it is. So when you talk about public-private partnerships, uh, that's where Web3 kicks in um, and it makes, uh, as I said, accountability, security and transparency. Those are the three big pillars, the reason. And then, of course, cost effectiveness, the reason it is being used. If you talk about running any, say, a food ration program, for instance, right? If you automate the supply chain on one hand and if you bring the whole supply chain on Web3, you bring the whole supply chain on blockchain, what that does? You can monitor all resources being spent. You can monitor the incentives being given to different stakeholders in the whole chain, which you can't, what that does. A public, a third party looking at it can entirely track everything from source to beneficiary. What that basically means, it lends transparency to citizens. It basically makes the government accountable and citizens and government transact on a one-to-one -one level using the infrastructure. It makes you cost effective because you're not spending extra cost on right. any other stakeholder. Right. That is why public private partnerships, I just mentioned one of the examples, but it could be extended towards arms licensing. Mm -hmm. It could be extended to predictive policing. Mm -hmm. It could be extended to land registrations, for instance. So there could be multiple use cases that India can have to use the technology, for instance. Right. Okay, uh, do uh, you want to add to that point before we uh, uh, hop on to another subject? Yeah, a little bit of it. I think uh, I'm glad that uh, among the other use cases, you have picked the Gert Chirori one because that is a use case that has been built on Polygon technology. Okay. So we are very close to it and we understand the leadership that has come out from that small district in order to do the caste certificate on blockchain. And I think the pretty much the premises there is that once the certificate has been issued, it should have the, uh, you know, the property of immutability so that nobody can go and temper the data. And that is the inherent benefit of blockchain. And I think what Pratik has been talking about different use cases where, again, the inherent benefit of blockchain becomes so, so important for the governance part of it. And that's where many government are looking in terms of adding that transparency or the better governance using blockchain technology. Well, I think... We are always looking for real use cases. I think this is a very good one. And our idea in Polygon no, is, is we are building this technology for, for the people, for the future, for, for real use cases. And once this works, let's try to, to enlarge and to expand it to other, other cities in India, if possible, or very around quickly, the world. Very quickly, could you just relate one real world example from this part of the world? Because City of Lugano. Okay. City of Lugano. City of Lugano. We are announcing this everywhere. All, all the fines, uh, tax, but also merchants are involved, hotels, coffees, shoes, you will be able to pay that with two stable coins, one back to Swiss franc, that is Luga, another two with a stable coin on top of Polygon. I, and I, we have, I, sorry, yeah, so, yeah, we, we have also a lot of interest from different cities around the world to do exactly that. They are reaching out to us, but first we are finishing this first use case and then we will expand.